is Bitcoin right now breaking out of this two month falling wedge which we covered in yesterday's webisode. After two straight days hovering right underneath this trend line, did the bulls just catch the bears wicking off on company time? But what's happening right now is actually a lot bigger than you might think. If you've ever seen the human centipede, the bears might just be third after all. And trust me, you don't want to be third. <laughs> your host Chadley Chug and Bust and boy are we not only busting but also thrusting right now as we talked about in yesterday's last night actually's video the only immediately bullish Bitcoin pattern where as you can see on the thumbnail we reference this two month long falling wedge pattern which many things are developing with that right now so we have a lot to be jumping into with that but more importantly there are some other things going on in some longer term charts which are much much bigger in my opinion absolutely time sensitive alerts and without any further magoo let's pump on in wow so before we go any further guys we just want to say first of all we're waiting for a confirmation yesterday i talked about actually for the past few days i've been talking about the 33.5 being a key level which as i'm recording we've just touched on however uh, we cannot get too excited just yet. This is a level I think we want to maintain for a good amount of time first, okay? We're touching it now. Uh, we just need to be careful. And as well, with all substantial or with most substantial breakouts, there usually there are back tests. So again, I just want people to be prepared because if you're watching this video and we had a little bit of a dippy do, that doesn't necessarily mean anything at all. We have just done something very big and I'm gonna jump into that here. So before we look at Bitcoin's chart here, guys, the DXY, uh, kind of stable today, right? We're heading into weekend price action. We have the SPX have an absolutely massive move. Look at this, a new all-time high for the SPX. My goodness, every time this bad boy looks like it's about to initiate a dump, uh, many times over the past even two months since Bitcoin's also been dumping, we've had multiple touches at the 50-day moving average. Every single time so far in the past two months, we've gotten new all-time highs after, almost immediately after. So uh, again, is this going to be sustainable? Is this going to be holding up for another year? Th that, I mean, nobody can tell you that. That's for sure. That's one thing I can say for certainty. Absolutely nobody knows exactly how long this thing can keep putting in new all-time highs. But as long as it's doing that, that has traditionally been good for Bitcoin and it's doing that. So that means that right now is good for Bitcoin. And before we get into Bitcoin as well, Ethereum actually is currently breaking above the 200 day moving average after just moments ago breaking above the 21 day. So again, uh, some pretty bullish indicators here. We got this bearish cross on July 20th. And as we said, uh, these bearish crosses with the 21 going below the 200, so a rather short-term moving average with a huge long-term moving average, 200, I mean, not huge, but it is much longer. Uh, those are usually not really bearish. Uh, those are, you know, a lot of people consider them very bearish. However, very often uh, what that does actually is mark the bottom and we actually go up from there. It takes a long time for the 21 to cross below the 200. As you can see here, I mean, this started really dumping the 21 back in the, uh, around May 20th. And it took about two months for it to cross here with the 200. So uh, kind of a delayed indicator. Really, uh, there have been many times in the past where that actually indicates a bottom as opposed to a bear market, as many, many people over the past two months have been just completely convinced. OK, uh, I think it would be fair to say right before we get into this Bitcoin price action, I think it would be fair to say that majority of people believe that or over the past two months, majority of people believed we were about to enter a very long bear market. And, uh, you know, what's normally the case is when everybody thinks one thing, it's usually not the case. Again, still way too early to tell. Now, with that being said, this is what we spent all of yesterday's video talking about, this two-month falling wedge, and I made the argument for it. In fact, uh, I got some gray names saying that this was uh, completely preposterous. But at this moment, the naysayers are probably scurrying to their mothers asking for a little bit of an allowance so they can put into Bitcoin so they can ride this move. But again, guys, still very early, but this is actually big for a few reasons, and we're going to be getting into it here. So... Before we really uh, jump into these other charts, uh, okay, we talked about this in excess yesterday. We spent the whole video talking about this and a very, very near possibility for a breakout. And we've gotten that so far. But the big thing about this is that this is a very big breakout target above 40,000. So this is the very beginnings of it. So give it some time. Uh, we're not gonna hit 40,000 tomorrow. It's gonna take some time. There's probably gonna be some pullbacks along the way. If you take a look at any Bitcoin chart, there's not a single chart where it only goes straight up. Even on the pumpiest of pumps, it staggers, right? It goes up a lot, has dips. So be patient with this. But this so far is looking actually pretty promising over the next week. And um, yeah, we do wanna cement a few things here. We're above some moving averages, very key ones on the four hour chart. But here guys, this is also equally important on the daily chart. 
we have only had a uh, very slim, very few amounts of daily closes above this trend. And um, where a lot of people debate the bottom trend line uh, of this last two months, it's very unanimous that the top trend line is, I mean, it's completely obvious, right? Nobody is debating this line. And that's why we talked about this yesterday. Uh, whereas there are quite a few touches um, you know, on this bottom line to convince that this is a very good falling wedge, the bottom of it here, it is not even a question that this line right here is where all of the resistance is, okay? Uh, and again, I don't really wanna spend too much time on this because it's just obvious at this point. And with that being said, uh, Bitcoin getting a daily close above, or just where we're at right now, but above this trend line, or, or above this trend here, uh, pretty much above 33,000 as we've been saying for the past few videos, that is very promising for Bitcoin. Not only that, we're currently, as of the last few moments, above the 21 day moving average, and as well, uh, a strong bounce off of this 50 week moving average is a, again, it's still too early to tell, but all I'm saying is if we look back in a month from now and we see something like this, uh, again, if we see a recovery off of this and ultimately see 50, the 50 week as the bottom, as we kind of re-enter a more bullish trend over the next few weeks and months, that would not be surprising to me. And I think a lot of people would look back and say, well, yeah, of course, that makes sense. We bounced off the 50 week. We were still in a bull market. This could be bullish, this is bullish. Now, that being said, again, still early, but you can see on this one hour chart, we've just broke through a very key fettuccine level, which we've been getting rejected from. Uh, we spent many times over the past 10 days getting rejected there. Um, and as well, this is big too. We had this potential triangle over the past two months as well. And this is big in the sense that we've now broken back above this resistance line, which was previous support for two months. And then ever since about July 14th, so only about 10 days ago, uh, it became really big resistance, but now we're getting a move up. And this actually reminds me, a lot of people are talking about this as a potential inverse head and shoulder. And that actually reminds me of the same pattern we saw back, I believe I'm going off memory, but I think it was back in September, October, or November of 2019. Um, and we saw, that was kind of like, I would say maybe the very beginning of the bull market before we got the crash in March of 2020. Things really started to turn around, if my memory serves me correct, back in... Um, September and October of 20. Yeah, exactly right. So I think it was actually uh, November of 2019. It's hard to see on this weekly chart, but there was an inverse head and shoulders here. Okay, we had a very nice move up to here. Then we had the crash. But obviously, you know, I personally think that if we wouldn't have had the crash, it probably would have been staggered, but we would have ultimately ended up going higher. But uh, I think this crash maybe just delayed it a little bit and potentially even made it more spring loaded and more powerful. Anyway, my point is uh, inverse head and shoulders can be very strong reversal patterns. And that is something that some people see in the charts. I personally think, yeah, that that probably makes a lot of sense. Uh, I personally could see that, but I personally think more that, that there's actually a bigger pattern, which is this, the two month uh, falling wedge, which has more power to it. The inverse head and shoulders people are talking about only has a breakout target of about, I think, 36 or 37,000. This uh, pattern here puts us above 40,000. So again, it's longer term. It'll take more time to reach that full breakout if in fact we do, but the signs we're getting now are good. So uh, again, ultimately, I think what's going to happen too is we're going to have to cement this 21 day as support. I don't think we've passed this 21 day and we'll never see it until, you know, $100,000 per Bitcoin. I think that we might have to back test it and everything. But uh, overall, uh, I think Bitcoin has a lot of momentum for this weekend. And in general, um, after this move right here where the bears failed to set a lower low, this was their opportunity. As I said, July 20th, this was the opportunity. And um, you can see these three lines here of kind of like the lows over the past two months. They failed at this opportunity. Absolutely a big fail. That was a very big fail. So um, yeah, now it 100% is the bull's turn for momentum. And now it's up to the bulls to see if they can break these key levels. Uh, reclaiming 35,000 is huge. And remember guys, the 35 to $37,000 range is not gonna be, I mean, it's not gonna be easy. So we're gonna need we're gonna need to see some massive pumpage to actually break that. That's gonna take a lot of pumpage, but um, yeah, we have obviously a lot of resistance above us, but right now things are looking pretty good. So if you get a new channel, make sure you hit that like, subscribe. Turn to get me, you see absolutely time sensitive alerts. And as well, if you guys are interested in earning APY, uh, TA trading, uh, anything like that, make sure to check out the description below. Some very nice bonuses as well. Uh, Bybit does offer spot now. But without any further ado, uh, that's it for me. Bye-bye.